All right, so continuing where we left off last time with the, I guess, initial setup of our subdomain, we can go and uh, look at our logs, and you can see how we were redirected to that WebCrunch subdomain specifically, but we're using the LVH.me instance, so we're able to do that based on all those configurations we set up prior. One issue I'm running to locally is a connection pool issue, and that's something that's kind of apartment gym's fault, but also the database type we're using. So SQLite doesn't really do great with the apartment uh, gem and scale. So it's something to think about and configure locally. It is a big gotcha. So if you're doing this and considering going production-based app with it, I would really recommend starting off with PostgreSQL and just configuring an app to use that out of the gates. Um, I'm showing you by example, so definitely take it with a grain of salt, but that's something you'd have to just configure in your database file here. So you'd just probably update the adapter you're using and then change the passwords and all that stuff for the PostgreSQL. I may do more videos of how to do that later on, but I think it's just kind of a something you can at least research. One thing we're looking into modifying here is how the connection pool is established and that's why we're getting this error right now in this console so we're seeing no connection pool with primary found and you'll see that as you you know load and reload your app at its current state if you're following along one way to fix this is to modify the puma server that we're running locally on rails 5.2 older versions of rails use something different but in our case this is what we're using for now i'm just going to modify this to one and it should fix our issue. Uh, you'll definitely want to restart your server though. And we're just going to basically use one thread instead of five throughout. So it's it's just like the max amount of threads you can use, as you can see here. So let's switch to one from five. So that's a small little gotcha. I just want to establish that because it's kind of something that may be causing a ruckus in your app and it's probably making it load slow and all those things. It took me a while to figure out. But with some Googling, of course, magic happens and I found a fix temporarily for that. So for this, that is kind of an issue, but that's something we will just kind of ignore with that little modification there. So continuing on in our app, we're ready to go into our subdomain routes. So at this point, I'd like to do some uh, work on our controllers and then initially our views. Uh, there's things I want to show and not show based on the condition of our URL. So if it's an actual scoped subdomain, I want to show certain things for a signed out user and vice versa. So, and the same is true for our main subdomain. I actually don't want a user to sign in on this, this instance. I want them just to go to either sign up or just visit their actual subdomain directly. So. I'll get into that later. I think we'll work on our controllers right now, and that's gonna be the main bread and butter of this video, I think. So let's go back into our controllers. Our workouts controller is gonna be uh, authenticated, of course. So we'll start there and do a before action. Authenticate, authenticate, user, bang. I'm just gonna do it for everything because I don't want them to enter any path of a workout before they're logged in. So that's what that's essentially saying. We can leave the index alone. The new is gonna be a little bit different in the sense that essentially for view to work, I should say, we need to do a few things differently than our current users.workouts.build thing. That's typically what we write here. We actually need an instance of the new method first so view can hook into it and not error out once we get to that step. And this is also for the nested attributes idea we're gonna be using too, so this needs to take place. So what I'm gonna end up doing is workout and then workout.exercises, which we didn't scaffold yet. I will do that next. Exercises, spell this right, dot build and work out user ID equals current user ID. So we're basically establishing the current user to the workout model. So first we need to add the user ID to the workout model. Let's do that in a migration. Cause I, I could have done that on our initial setup, but I just did not. So I'll do rails generate migration 
call it add user ID to workouts. And we'll just say user ID integer. I'm just going to migrate that. So that should be all set up in our database. Now you do notice now that we have a tenant, we don't get that error back. So that's pretty cool. And it's doing the same thing in our base schema to our web crunch tenant. So all these things are affecting every database in your app. So it's pretty neat. Okay. So with that migrated, we can generate our exercise model. Now I'll do that. And it's going to be a scaffold too. So I'll do that exercise name will be string. I'll just do weight as a string. Oops, weight string. And then workout, man, I can't type today. Workout, it'll be references. So this is just saying it belongs to the workout. Generate that. Again, it's generated the stupid scaffolds thing. I can always pass a flag there. I'm just too lazy to do so. So I'd rather just delete it. Cool. And that's good. Let's check out that migration just for grins. Yeah, so it adds a foreign key, not an index, my bad. So that references the workout and it has the exercise name, weight. It looks like I forgot sets though. Um, yeah, so let's add that manually. String sets. So at any time before you migrate, you can add things and you can actually roll back and do it the same. So it's kind of a neat little thing. I think we'll roll there. I'm gonna put this in front of the weight. Just so when we see the views, we'll have it in order um, if we don't do it otherwise. So I'll do migrate again. Great, so now we have exercises on both our databases. And here's where we can hook into our, our models, but I'm gonna first set up our controller to be exact here. And since we just generated that workout controller, we can add our nested attributes. As is, it's going to do, it's going to only permit these things when we submit the form, but we wanna update that to be basically a shorthand naming convention for exercises attributes. And you'll see why this is called that in a second. And then we can pass in each thing we want from the exercise and destroy comes by default. So we'll actually pass that explicitly uh, for nested attributes. And then we'll pass the name sets and then wait. So this allows you to essentially create a workout that has the exercise fields and still create that record and still reference an exercise and workout. So it's complicated, but it works and I love it. With that, we can go modify our models now, I think. So, so this actually relates and works. So I'm kind of jumping around. I apologize if it's kind of all over, uh, but this is just how I'm kind of building out the app. So a workout on its own will belong to a user. And I can't type. Okay. And then it's going to have as many exercises. That makes sense because we want multiple exercises per workout. And then dependent destroy. So if the workout is destroy, so will the exercises. And then here's where the magic happens for the nested attributes. So accepts nested attributes for and then we call it exercises and then allow destroy true by default that's not enabled so you can't just delete them so you have to actually explicitly say destroy and that colon should be there and then our work exercise is going to belong to workout it's already got that enabled which is great Okay, so our user model now needs to be updated to have many workouts. So I'm gonna add that now, has many workouts since we have that available. And then we could do the dependent destroy thing again. Great, so I think 
our models and logic should be set up there. Okay, so with that in place, we can essentially create new workouts and stuff within our app. We can start hooking into the views and making sure that all that works. I think what I wanna do is verify our workout controller is all set up. The naming convention here corresponds to the model and the plural side of it, but then you add these attributes. So you'll always have whatever model, add an S and then attributes here for nested parameters or nested attributes, excuse me. So that's just the naming convention. Rails is definitely convention over configuration. That's something you learn and just figure out as you go. So that's just something to remember. Our create method here needs to be updated though. So I wanna actually do the current user.build instance there for our, our controller. So I will do that user.workouts.build. Great. And yeah, it should be all set then. Because of view and the way it's gonna work, this might not even matter, but it's something to at least get in place in case JavaScript is disabled or something like that. So I think I'll stop at this point of this video. That's enough setup for the models and controllers on this side of things. So I think next we'll make sure view is ready to roll uh, Vue.js and then get our actual views in some better working conditions. So I'll see you in the next one.